Hello, everybody. I'm Karina Moskarka. Good morning. Good morning. Um, will you just introduce yourself briefly for the panel of judges, please? Mm, so I'm Russian practicing lawyer since since I was Soviet practicing lawyer, starting in 1977, then continue after Russia became independent country, a new country, uh, I started to practice human rights law because we were lucky to become a part of the European Court on Human Rights System and generally uh, a European Council of Europe uh, system. And since that time, uh, I started to work both in Russia and in Strasbourg court. And I represent the, uh, quite a lot of uh, victims, but when I say me, it means a great team which calls International Protection Center, now registered in Strasbourg according to the uh, French law. Uh, it calls Centre de la Protection de la Protection Internationale. And so we are doing cases in Russia, in Ukraine, in um, uh, Armenia, other countries. And finally, if people will not receive uh, justice in their countries, we represent victims before the European Court of Human Rights. Some many years I was a commissioner for the ICJ, International Commission of Jurists and member of the executive committee. Now I'm kind of retiring and I'm an honorable member. Also I have honorable uh, doctor degree in the American University, South, South Methodist University. And uh, uh, my current appointment was the, in, the, in the United Nations. Uh, I'm not uh, in a position to say mo much about that, but uh, now I'm uh, uh, head of the expert team on investigation of find, finding mean, mission uh, in Bel uh, on violations of human rights in Belarus, but I'm not in a position to say uh, something about that. And how many cases, Ms. Moskalenko, have you tried or investigated of uh, the killing, killing of journalists or repressed? Good question. If you are asking about my personal uh, cases where I'm the the only lawyer, it's maybe less than 100. But with our team, it's more than 600 cases, one already before the European Court, and some five or 600 uh, filed more, and uh, pending, uh, expecting the deliberation of uh, the European judges. And all these cases were filed and initiated in Russia? Uh, they were exhausted. I mean, as, as uh, domestic remedies, they were exa exhausted in Russia, or I said in Ukraine or Armenia or Azerbaijan or other country. And then, on behalf of the victims in Russia, in other countries, it has been filed with the European Court, later uh, found admissible, and later we won this number of cases, and we we keep doing, uh, we continue to work on some other new cases. And could you please introduce for the tribunal and the audience the case of the journalist Ala Polinistoskaya? Oh, thank you for your question, but it is very, very touching and very difficult question because Anna, she was my friend. We were not... We were doing uh, actually the same cases where people were hopeless, like in Chechnya, for example, during the uh, military operation. And people feel like Anna is their last resort. She comes to camps. Thank you very much. She's coming to the camp. She's uh, listening to the story. She's publishing her articles. And with, the, with this, they were some kind protected and survived and things like that. And uh, she gave me these names, uh, or I received some information from other sources. And I visited 
almost the same people, and I advise them to bring the cases to the European Court because of impossibility to defend them within the country. So we, together with uh, some Russian human rights organizations like Memorial, Moscow Helsinki Group, for which I am a member since, uh, we started the movement of protecting these people if it is impossible to, pro to defend them within the country. Of course, we were doing all the steps to exhaust the domestic remedies. Later, to bring these cases to the European Court. And Anna, she was not only the source of the information, she was living, she, she forgot about her own life. She was living with these people uh, morally, and she supported them very much. And she toughly criticized the high military, uh, high rank military uh, staff, and the, the whole political um, leadership in Russia. And so that was clear, including for her, that one day they would, will not allow her to continue. That was a question of time. Because you should know that so many journalists in Russia were silencing, not necessary with assassination, just silencing, silencing because they had something to, to afraid, even afraid for their next kin, their relatives, or some, you know, misdoing in some questions. I mean, they stopped to criticize. And only those for whom the authority had no any comp compromise, let's say, like Anna Politkovskaya, Yuri Shikachikhin, Dmitry Kholodov, all these cases I am doing, Natalia Istimirova, other assassinated journalists, they were not something in their background which allowed the authorities to push them, to threat them, and to make them silence. The most, I mean, really most significant was name of Anna Politkovskaya, whom people know, whom Russian people trusted, and we all relied on her, and one day, horrible day, 7th of October, 2006, uh, in, in the elevator of his, her own house, she was killed by somebody, some bastards. And I started with, his, with her case immediately. And I'm continuing until, tomorrow, uh, until yesterday. And tomorrow I'm going to do some more steps on this case. What we were doing, from the very beginning, when we have noticed that this, that this investigation on this case is not adequate, effective, or somehow persuasive, we started to complain, firstly, to the domestic court that this is not effective and there is a procedure which allows us. And later, when the Russian court, regional court, did not react properly on these signals, we went to the European Court of Human Rights. What does not reacting properly means in Russia? Were they <laughs> taking Sorry. steps to investigate? Were there proceedings in place? How did they handle this yeah, case? There are some, uh, uh, some standards of the effective investigation, which have been already produced by the European Court before Anna's case, but we confirmed this in our judgment, uh, in the court's judgment. It is the immediate actions discovering the truth, uh, trying of the investigation to find those perpetrators, active steps, um, following the request of the victim side. We filed many uh, motions uh, pushing the investigation to discover the truth, and they were all refused by the investigator. Non-accession of our side, victim side, 
uh, and I represented it, uh, I represented a family of Anna Politkovskaya. Her two children, her sister and her mother, mom, mom is not still alive, unfortunately. But we started uh, on behalf of four. And the, the investigator refused us everything. And the court in Russia said, it's OK. Nothing special. But the European court had registered this case. And during all this investigation, with all these stages and steps, they were listening how our case in, in Strasbourg is going on. Because if I, I no, named some people like Dmitry Holodov, uh, Yuri Shikachikin, Paul Hlebnikov, whom, uh, whose family I um, consulted sometimes, Natasha Istimirova, in all these cases, there was no such a great opportunity to refer to the findings of the European Court. But in this case, our authorities, they were caring about what's going on. That's why, finally, uh, in the same year, 2007, when we filed our complaint, they have arrested about 10 people. Then some of them b were released. Some of them new were arrested. Uh, and uh, after all, um, all those criminals were acquitted. And we said, OK, they are innocent. But who are responsible? Still, the, uh, the government of the country is responsible. And if you want to clean your name. Please investigate properly. Who were these individuals? Who were these associated to the government? Who were these individuals that were arrested? Um, they were not associated uh, with the government. They were just very flu influential people. But they all were released, and I am not in a position to name them. So if they are released, or some of them are acquitted, then they are innocent, formally. But finally, after the acquittal uh, judgment, based on the acquittal uh, uh, verdict of jury, some of them were arrested again. And, and then some more people already associated uh, with, uh, with the high police uh, um, entity, uh, secret entity, who is following us when they want to protect our lives. And in this case, that was vice versa. So uh, these people were arrested in a new trial. And what I'm saying, only because this case was at the control, let's say, uh, or and the managing by the European court, it gives us a great chance to have this case uh, sent to the Russian court and everybody could listen and see what happened in this case. By the way, the, uh, the judicial authorities wanted to close the trial. We objected as a victim side, but suddenly discovered some uh, wrongdoing of the court, and they forced to open the trial. So Anna trial was opened both times. Just one last question, just for everyone to know. What is the status right now of Anna's case? Well. So finally, five people were convicted, and one more person who is a con who uh, used to be a con or colonel of the secret um, police. Uh, he was um, convicted to 11 years. Uh, some of the criminals been uh, convicted in their main trial to uh, long terms, uh, 14 years, uh, 11 years, and 12 years, and uh, two. Uh, life sentences, this is kind of our achievement at that stage, but we are not satisfied with that because we still do not have those who financed this crime, those who ordered this crime. And actually, on my humbling view, we still have no the person who kill Anna, because one who was convicted for this action, he certainly was around this uh, uh, horrible team. But he was not the, the same person who, uh, you, you can see the uh, uh, camera 
the person who left the uh, entrance of Anna's house, it is another person. And nobody wants to discover that. But because the European Court in, uh, two years ago said, Russian authorities, they are responsible for the violation of Anna's right to life. And there was no adequate and uh, mm, effective investigation means that the Russian authorities, they have to continue the investigation. In all cases, uh, uh, list of cases have been closed already, except Anna's case. case. So we keep them, like, you know, responsible and obliged to, to do something, and they are sometimes imitating something, imitating something, activity. Sometimes they discover new facts, but we keep this case ongoing. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Sorry.